watch it. Hello, everyone. Good morning, afternoon, and evening to you wherever you are. And uh, we're very happy to have Judith here with us. This is Symbiosis 2. And in Symbiosis 1, you know, everyone saw Judith's uh, process um, journal that she compiled, you know, to show her learning journey. And then there were a lot of requests that came in after that to say, can Judith show us how she does this? How did she put it all together? And then so when I invited Judith to come back for Symbiosis 2, uh, she thought that this would be an interesting topic for all of us. So if you are um, here and uh, from for the first time, this is how the story began with Judith's uh, learning journey. So I'm very happy to um, spotlight Judith for everyone. And then Judith, take it away. Hello, guys. So um, thank you, Dorothy, for inviting me back. Uh, this is a mini session by popular request from the last session. Um, and for context, like Dorothy mentioned, I'm, I'm Marina's mentee along with Lissette. And what happened was when Dorothy reached out to us saying that, oh, Judith, would you like to be mentored? Or who would you like to be mentored with? I immediately said Marina because I had just taken a course by her. I was so inspired. So at the start of the journey, during Marina's courses, if you ever attended any of them, Marina has a, a lot of quotes and a lot of knowledge that she shares with all her students. And I knew that if I were to in, enter into a mentorship, I would want to record, uh, like in some way, record all that she says. So what I did, the first thing I did was basically start taking notes for all the meetings. So I was the scribe and I would take very detailed notes. Um, I would type them out, I will print them, I will send them to Marina and Lissette. And they, it gives the impression that I'm very organized, but honestly, I'm not a very organized by nature, okay? So, so I'll show you on the document camera, my process book, the one that started it. It has grown to this thickness. Uh, it's not complete yet, unfortunately, because I have more photos, but I'll show you why this is the center of this is basically a fourth work from the symbiosis exhibition because it, it takes a lot of time, okay? So I will share my screen if I can find where the share screen function is. Share screen, my visualizer. Dorothy, can you see my visualizer? Yes, we can. Okay, let me zoom out. I hope it doesn't show too much of the mess <clears throat> at the side. But so this is a working cover. This is my book. Um, it has grown to this much. And for context, I'll show you this book first and then I'll show you the precursor to this book, the book that inspires, okay? Let me brighten it. It's gotten a bit darker. So this was in April, 20, April 24th last year. That was the very first meeting we had. So you see a very happy photo of Marina. <laughs> she was a bit tired, I think, the session. And what happened was we start, I started documenting things in a collage style because she gave us a lot of assignments. And unlike Gemma, she actually had a team from the start. She said, because we're sort of different cultures, maybe a garden team is something very close to her. She shared that with us and maybe you could work on that. So I did a lot of work that are based on points of gardens, plants. Um, you will start to see more, more of the mess, but it's okay. And I started weave in personal stories like, oh, um, these are my parents, this is me getting married in the garden. I live in a place that is called Pandan Gardens, you know? And so every, all those pages are anchored by the weekly sessions. So this is the first meeting. And if you keep seeing things like this, these are the anchoring pages for this entire book. Okay, so we have photos. Um, and I'm just going to fast forward to a few more things. Um, so what happened was I am... Like I said, I'm not very, I'm not very organized by nature. I would do things like involved um, doing things on pieces of paper. For most part of the exhibition, all of my process things were floating on different pieces of paper like this, you know. I'll do experiments. They're all on different papers. They're all on different sizes. And I wanted a way to try to collate them because... For the most of our exhibition, there were so many things happening. My life was happening. All this was happening. I was trying to put everything together. So I came up progressively with a system of 
allowing me to put in different pieces that tell a story. Okay, so this is like a set, a, a mock-up, an early mock-up. I started doing things where, sorry, the sun is like a bit distracting, but I started doing things where you could see the things behind because they were related to each other. And then I took different causes. This one is by Massimo Polello. He had a spring fest sharing. And um, so I did a lot of things, explorations, where, for example, something like this could be pulled out to show different works. So because I have scraps of paper, I have a lot of pieces where I cut uh, papers and I have a whole folder. I'm not sure if I can show you, but it's a whole folder worth of scrap pieces. So what I'll do is all of these, all of these uh, texts that you see are all scrap papers I've used. Um, so it was just a ready resource of things. I started doing drafts. And with drafts, um, they're kind of flimsy, so I needed a little pocket to hold them. So that's one of the systems I developed. And this gave back so much because at the start of some of the sharings, I started doing things that are, I'm not sure you can find the specific page, but I started doing something like this, which I'll take all the meeting notes in shorthand which is a scribble that like you can see. And I started taking all these shorthand notes, converting them into print type notes, and I started weaving them together. So these pieces throughout the book, I actually took a few to be my part of my final work in the symbiosis exhibition. So fast forward a bit. This is the one that I think um, a lot of people were surprised by. I actually released the binding, but so that it's easier to flat lay. But um, I started doing more experimental works and it became more and more of a thing. And what happened was, this was the start of quite a few processes. Um, so this is an original that I did. And I think during Nina's sharing, she was saying that she was actually very afraid of experimenting. And I encountered that same problem too. Like for example, I did this on nice paper and I didn't know how else I could edit this because I didn't want to spoil this piece, this original piece. So Marina, she had this brainwave. She said, Today there's, there are a lot of ways to free yourself up from the burden of being scared to edit your work. She said, take a photo, bring it into Photoshop or do all your experiments on Photoshop. Or you can take a photo and you can print it out, many copies of it, and you can experiment experiment on very good paper, you just print them out on 150, 120 good GSM paper and just experiment freely. And from this, she told me that, okay, maybe this one is a bit too tight. So I started experimenting, hey, if I digitalize this, I could adjust the layout however I wanted. And because of this one process that she highlighted, I started doing things that were more sequential um, let me show you the one that I think this is the one that everybody remembers visually because in terms of colors this one is the one that is the most colorful so this is literally what she said just take that same photo and develop it in a way that you could test the colors you could test the layouts you could test different concepts and so because I had multiples of all of these works that are photocopied I had to develop a system to showcase them, which is how the entire process started about, hey, how do I showcase this entire process? Okay. And then there were quite a few experiments in between. So this is another system that I developed. Uh, I call this the overlay because what it is, is that I had original text that I written based on my quotes. I did some experiments on it. I digitalized it in black and white, in digital. And then I created a piece based on this work. But then I wanted a way to show how it looks in relation to the original work. So this way of overlaying is, it tells the story very straightforwardly in the sense that I get to see the original, I get to see the in-process work that inspired this work, and I get to see all the different pieces, okay? And this part is important. So I was trying to get the idea of soil and grass. 
and I came up with a series of textures to work with how I want to depict soil. And because I had a few, I wanted to play with them. And it became a sort of thing where I could take this and I could match it to what I already had and figure out in the mock-up which variation would go well with this variation here. So this, uh, this led to another way of keeping the pieces in which I could take them out, I could play with them. And if I forget which pieces go into which slots, I have little notes to remind me which pieces go into which slots because that happens. So that's one thing that was useful for me. Um, let me see. So these are the main few things. Like it allowed me to keep whole drafts. So this is a very, very thick, it's actually got width. So this is the thickest page in the book. Um, in order to make it sure it doesn't fall out, I actually have a band here, belly band here, so that it doesn't fall out. So with me, when I was doing, I had a lot of pieces lying around, piece of paper lying around. I also had a lot of photos. And with photos of the process, which I will show to Marina, I had to find some way to either lay out like this, or there was another way where, um, this was where I was doing the spirals. It was getting more and more, let me see if I can brighten this. It was getting more and more structural and 3D, which meant that everything I put, everything I did had to be kept um, in a way that could keep it. Let me, come on. This one's not putting, fitting in. I'll fit it in later, yes. And so the way I present the works can be like literally pasting everything and cutting and pasting, which is like this. The other way I present photos, it's an insert in which it folds out like this. Because for example, this set, it's a set of, I think 20 plus photos. It's too many. It's too many to just um, paste and cut and paste. It takes too much time. So I laid it out in A4 and I cut it and I folded it so that I could fold out to see the progress all at one shot. Okay. So these are the different parts. Um, this is a rejected idea of a lamp that Marina said, too much, too complicated. Judith, go scale back, scale back. Through the entire journey, she was telling me, Judith, too much, too much. Simplify, okay? So this is one of the, one of the ideas that I presented to Marina. Um, I think this is one of the very fun ones where I took a piece of text, I digitalized it, I picked up all the black, all the counter spaces, I numbered them like in the game, I started joining them together to make a face and things like that. I'll play around and I could keep them all here. So if you notice right by now, these are loose pieces. These are pieces I have not put back into the final one because when I work, I actually work with, I'll do maybe like a part of a page and I'll leave it blank because I know I have photos. I know I have things to add to it. So I'll have pieces that pages are already done, uh, pages that are not done. So for example, this is, this is actually cut by a machine. So all of these pieces I'll keep together in the correct week that I did the work. And I'll just have empty pages where I will fill up. So this process takes a long time, okay? In, in the middle of doing all the work, I can't always keep on track with filling out the process book. To be honest, the process book was taking more time than actually the work sometimes. So for example, doing this, I did a lot of variations over, I think, over three days. But it just so say, this is three days worth of work all simplified and put together like this, which simplifies the process, but my process was never linear. So that's how it looks simpler than um, when I was actually figuring things out. So these are all the pages. This was the, the page the way I, I did a sharing. And what I'll do is I will show you two things, okay? Oops, not supposed to see this yet. But um, this was inspired very briefly 
by an old process photo I had where it's a photography book. I did this in a student work and I had a lot of test prints. So what I started doing with test prints was I started overlaying them. Okay, I did this as a student. I did this, I shared this previously, but it's just the idea that I had a lot of pieces and I overlaid them. And this process folder is a direct result of that. Okay? So I will go through a little bit about the stuff I prepared to show you how you can do this. And it's actually quite simple to me. Um, it's a more intuitive process than, than it seems. Okay? So I, I shared about a journey in the folder. Um, setting up a system, how I decided that I wanted an A4 was simply because I knew I was going to type out meeting notes. And meeting notes on A4, it's, it's easy to read. So I said, okay, I wanted a folder. I didn't want a notebook. So I found a folder which was an expandable file. This is, I found this in my local store. There were a few considerations. Um, this is expandable. So I could always expand. This was also a plastic one. So in Singapore, metal always rusts and it will affect all my pages. So I wanted a plastic folder divider. I had an A4 paper that I could remove and add to at any time. It was gridded, so it allowed me for very easy composition. So I chose this before I started the journal. Okay, the tools that I use most frequently um, will be acid-free tape and glue tape because this saves a lot of time, um, a pen knife, and basically all of the materials that I have that I do, I work with. So for example, all of this, right? All your process works, they will inform how you organize because things like this, I will just very simply overlay. If it's things like this, where I'm showing different papers, then I might want to attach them together and put them in a folder. So I'm informed by the works I'm trying to I'm trying to show, okay? So that is the system. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to, mess, to unmute and ask me. If not, I'll just share a little bit more. So I've introduced a few ways of organizing and this is the very first way, okay? The light is like that. You can see it better. So, if you have multiples of anything, if you have multiples of, let's say, oops, I, lit, I made little mock-ups. The most obvious example would, let me see if I can find that one, the Lotus. The Lotus is a multi, example of multiples. It's basically an accordion fold. So you paste them, in this case, they all had different pages. They were all the same size. And I pasted them on the back to make it an accordion. And I staggered them so that they would not be too chaotic. Okay, so when I opened them, they would look fairly uniform. So for accordion folds, it's very simple. You take whatever content you have, you tape them on the back so that they link. The pieces can be either related to each other or they can be progressional. Like for example, like, oh, this leads to this, leads to this, leads to this. So, and behind it, I tend to write a description about what the thing is because there's a, it has a very easy space for you to look at in relation to the work. So that's how I started thinking, okay, um, this way of folding and looking out is quite simple. And it was definitely inspired by the way Marina told us to photocopy our works. Okay, photocopy and then get over the, the fear of starting. So this is one of the pieces for multiples. For the second type, so this is a very simple, you can see a dog, but what the process is, is basically starting from something. So this is a this is a very simple progression overlay. It's inspired by Marina and her light box use of negative space. 
So I start with I start with text that I write. I start to observe the negative shapes or like the the whatever experiment that I want to play with. And I use a transparency. This is used in uh, overhead transparencies, book covers. And I overlay a treatment that I want to put over it so that I can also overlay onto original work. So with something like this, there are different axes. You can, like for what I have done, I have put it on three sides so they open up separately. You can actually overlay them on the same side as well. It's up to you. So you can just play around with different ways of overlapping them. Okay, so hope it's a puppy that's walking in the park. Okay, for storage purposes, if you have lots of things that are loose, so like I shared with you, lots of things that are loose and you don't know how to fit them in. I have literally just taken transparency. I pasted the two ends and it allows me to do things like this. So I have little slots where I can just move in and out and it allows me to keep things that can be relational to each other in the page. Okay. So like if you want to write a description of item, write this because before you paste down both sides of transparency, this is, you should write a description because once you take it out, sometimes you forget what was in here. It has happened to me a few times, okay? And I have this, which is another pocket, another example of a pocket. Um, because the transparency is not, it's not clear, so I mark the edges of the transparency. So this is a pocket which was made up of, if I am not wrong, uh, a Ziploc bag. So I actually have uh, a Ziploc bag of stuff. And um, so I little folders like these. And what I did was basically, if I had an item that fits into a plastic bag, I would put it in, I would cut the top and I would cut the side so that I will have a sleeve like that. So with uh, A4 folders, with A4, um, or even A5 folders, I can just do this to make a very, very simple folder inside my book. So this allows me to put thicker materials. If the item itself is a bit thicker and I'm afraid of things falling out, I'll actually put something like a belly band here at the bottom. So once this is in place, it will not fall out easily because it will fall on the belly band. But when I want to take it out, I lift it up and it comes out. Okay? So it's just a matter of slotting it in and taking it out like that. So this is actually the three systems that I have done. And the magic really is in how I implemented them. Because like I said, I'm not naturally organized. These have to be really, really simple in order for me to work very quickly. And that's how I try to play around with a lot of the things. Um, let me see if I have. So a lot of my pages, if you notice, they have little flyaway things, okay? This is what I call the afterthought because very often I would finish a page and then I'll find something else that I want to include that I did not paste onto the page. So for example, let me see if I can find one. I actually have a lot at the end. Um, let me see, yeah. So this is, for example, quite a typical example of an afterthought. Let me see if I can zoom out. As you can see, right, very quickly when I'm working with these, my table gets very messy. I did this page first. I said, okay, I'm going to do a page on spiral experiments, how it layers out. I had wire behind, stuff like that, my experiments. And then I realized that before this, I actually had a certain line that I did. I want to add it in. So I'll have a little, I'll add in tape and I'll just paste it in. And I had a lot of these pieces happen as an afterthought. Because like, for example, oh, I did a sharing and I forgot to put it in a page, but I've already done the page. I'm not going to undo the page. So I'll just add an afterthought. 
Okay. So like here, like for example, I realized I have a photo of what Marina was talking about in the meeting. So I added an afterthought to place it right at the point where she was commenting. Okay. So this is how I started playing with the different variations. Um, if there's anything that we need to take away, it's actually just this page. It's just a simple simplification of all the different systems. It gets out of my way so I can showcase the work. And um, let me see. A lot of, let's see. The thing is, these things, right, is that they can be adjusted quite simply. So for example, if I have pieces that I want to write, and I notice that, hey, there's a little piece that, um, there's a little piece that fits in this corner. These are all old works. What I'll do is I'll just do something like this. And I'll say things like, um, it's not the best writing. So one thing I took away from Marina, especially because I was working through a plateau, a bit like what Rachel was saying, was that we're all, as calligraphers, we're very stuck with the perfectionist side. Everything I present must be beautiful. We all know Spencerian, we all know the scripts, we all know the rules. But working in this way of collage and just doing things very quickly, gave me a freedom of expression in which, hey, you know, it's not so scary. I can just do things very simply and I'll actually do things very fast. So in this case, I finished a page that could fit inside my journal, you know, just by doing a simple explanation of how I did all these pages. Um, for example, I have bigger pieces of work that don't fit in the journal. I, I chose A4 because I could fit a lot of the small pieces in, but for big pieces, I can't. So like for example, this piece is larger than A4. I had huge pieces I worked on that I couldn't fit in. And what I did was, so this is basically just a plastic folder that's quite big. I labeled the edge because I realized that it's quite hard to see on the visualizer. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this into a folder that can access easily, okay? And this is just an example of how I can use folders and plastics to help me protect my work. So, I'm sorry that this is turning out to be like a, a bit of a show and tell. It's, it's, it's quite a lot of ideas to just show at once. So I just wanted to show first, and then if you have any questions, then let me know, okay? So this is just a folder. I'm going to cut off this edge first. Let's say something like this. If you ever want to cut anything, um, I personally, because I cut a lot of paper, I use a 30 degree blade by Ofa, but you can use any other type of cutter if you want. But just to save your fingers, because I have cut myself many times, when you cut anything from a metal ruler, try not to use too much force, but I always do this trick where I put it on the side and I move my pen, my pen knife to the ruler. So I do this, it usually takes like less than one second, but doing this allows me to not cut myself because I have, in my haste, cut myself a few times. So if you just do this, and then you do this, this part comes out, okay? And then, what I do is I'll move this to this part. I always cut the fold, the pocket of folder a bit bigger than original work. So I have cut one side. I have another side cut. So it's basically a folder, okay? And what I want to do is I want to cut off the bottom part as well. So what I'm going to do is Again, when using a pen knife, please use it carefully. Um, I'll flip it this way. So I always do it in a way that the pen knife is moving away from me. I will do this. I'll keep my fingers away and I will just 
trim out the plastic. Okay. And what I did beforehand was that I actually applied tape to the inner side of this plastic, of this uh, fold, of this paper. So what I have is basically a folder that is plastic protected where I'm doing this and I have little tabs. You can actually see that it keeps it in. But when I want to flip it over, because the other side is also removable, I have a surface to hold it so that the first part does not come out. So I, th I think this is part of my graphic design training. I, I love having little instructions. And so things like this is all part of my larger process journal that I can't fit in. I work a lot with plastic folders, a lot of um, stickers as well, and anything that I can get my hands on, and I collage it into this folder. So that's actually the end of my sharing. <laughs> it's actually quite fast because it's all about varying all these tools, right? When I was planning it, I said, actually, when I share, I only have about 15 minutes worth of content because it's so simple. Um, but it's just the way you consistently apply them. That's the, that's the most interesting part. Yeah. So um, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, you can awkwardly stare at each other <laughs> for the next few minutes. Or, yeah. Judith, I think it's very simple to you because it's you, you know. This is coming from your brain. And it, it, for me, it looks, it looks like a lot of work. It's very complicated. But I think uh, a lot of us are chatting in the, in the chat and we are very happy that now we don't have to feel bad about hoarding scraps. <laughs> the scraps of paper and like, oh, I like this paper. Transparent thing. I like this plastic. So yeah, Ecta says she's mind blown. <laughs> oh thank yeah. you so it, it, for you you know it looks simple but for us oh my goodness yeah <laughs> oh thank you yeah I mean it's... the best that I could do when I wanted to record my progress is to find like a like let me show you <clears throat> like this is my folder <laughs> and I just put all my scissors inside you know with a sleeve that's it that's how how uh, how much of that you know journaling thing I can mm. do so does anyone yeah. have questions for Judy anything specific you want to ask her how do you use the scraps though or are they just for the pleasure of hoarding <laughs> oh I have a lot of scraps so I have a lot of things like stickers I have a lot of things that are pieces of papers that I've saved so for example these ones right um uh, Every time I want to set out to do a page, let me share my screen again and I can show you how I do it. Um, wait, let me see if, did I close the screen? Oh, I did, okay. Let me reopen my visualizer and then I will share my screen. Share screen. Hmm. How do I share my screen again? Can't seem to find the share screen option. Um, uh, let me see, whiteboard, share screen, don't think I can't seem to share my screen again. Oh yes, oh. I found it, found it, okay. Eh? No, it's not detecting, okay. Let me see if I can open my visualizer again. Okay, and then I will try to share the screen. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. So yeah, all these scraps that I use, when I have a page, it always comes as a blank page, okay? And how I start is really knowing that, okay, I have a title I need to make, like what the page is about. So I'll just open up my scrap pages. And I'll say, okay, I have a piece of brown paper that looks like it will stand out against this page. I'll just cut out a piece and then I'll, I'll just write the title of it. So all of these are all made from scraps of papers I have because I have so much. I have several folders of these actually. So it's reusing, because of collage, it allows me to reuse my scraps. Um, for things like um, 
little strips. I find them very useful as dividers. So sometimes I keep them, sometimes I don't. For the other, so I have pages that are more like patterns. So I actually paste the patterns behind and then paste my formalized work or my experiments, let's say, I'll paste it in front so that there is contrast. So these are just elements that I lay up, a bit like scrapbooking, so that it allows for layering of textures. So when I look back at my process journal, it is, it is another piece of discovery. I'm always excited by what I find in my process journal because sometimes I forget what I pasted inside. Okay. Um, Singapore's weather is really not conducive for papers and bugs. Um, so it's a very good question because if you see, let me show you two things, right? So then I'll get back to your question later, okay? The first book that I did, Late Flat. So this has been about 11 years since I made this book. Um, I've, got a, I've got a very hardy cloth surface and it's, it's flat, okay? Because it's flat, nothing can really stay inside much. And I don't have a problem with bugs with this. The only thing I have with the weather is that the papers start to yellow and they get a bit damp. But for example, my new process book, which is the current one I'm working on, I mentioned that the pockets allow for thicker pieces, which means I have things like this, which are very thick, which means when you look from the top, there's actually space for bugs to come in. Okay? So it's, it's a very practical concern. I agree, there's, dust can collect in all of these as well. Um, for what I do to keep the pests away, I have more balls. I actually try to, as much as possible, keep my books in a cupboard that is covered. So if it's, um, if it, at least in Singapore, if you have a cupboard that is a, a shelf, that is exposed, dust will definitely collect into all of these. You don't want that. It will eat in the paper. If it's a cupboard with a door, the dust doesn't get in, but sometimes bugs and um, humidity will set in. So I put the humidifiers, um, like thirsty hippo, something to remove the water from the air. I put in mothballs to keep the bugs away. But the most, the easiest way to prevent all this from happening, hopefully, is really to take it out once in a while. Take it out once in a while, air the pages, keep looking through, and that prevents the pages from sticking to each other. Um, I use archival tape and page so that I don't have to worry about work, like yellowing pages as much. And a lot of what I do, like Susan mentioned, right? This is more of a... It's, it's very good for keeping process and rough works. And you can see that the vibe is completely not serious. And for formalized designs or bookmaking, I think I was watching Bakit sharing and she was sharing about how um, Yukimi does very beautiful books. And Chana was like, I want to learn. And I saw that I said, I want to learn too. Because I know, I know Japanese step binding, but... Honestly, I don't have the patience sometimes to make sure all my experiments are on the same size of paper so that I can compile them into a proper book by the end. So that's why I went with a folder because it's so much more forgiving. Um, eventually, I do think any of these tips can fit into a piece that's meant to be properly bound. It's just an insert that you put in that can add interest to the way you showcase your process. All of this on its own, it's very adaptable. I could do that in the long run, but I have not done it yet. For now, it's just a process folder and I have used it as such, okay? Um, for formalized designs, so for example, things that are like this, where it's more of a way of a system to protect a design that I have already worked on, things like this can be very useful for more formalized works. Of course, you will not paste the, you will not put blue tape here. That's not the most ideal. But the whole idea of protecting it in plastic is so that when you want to show future clients in the work, when you want to 
highlight, oh, there are different experiments I can play with. It is in a format that, is, that doesn't fall out because I have a version here and I'm holding everything every time I move because for the longest time, I was keeping pages like this. They were all over my room, which is a mess. And pieces like this are very unwieldy because if you see, I actually bent this area, okay? Which is not the most ideal. So in order to keep that, I have cardboard. I put plastic so that when I move the, when I'm moving the whole thing, I can hold so the bottom doesn't flip on me. And then um, if this, the whole idea of this spiral, right, is actually because there's supposed to be a jar lamp inside to talk about how from the top you can see one piece of work, but at the side, you can really see the reservoir of work that goes beneath the actual making of this. So I came up with this spiral and that's how it all works out, okay? So for example, um, the, these are just ways of keeping your work safe and um, how you can eventually over time work out everything that you want to keep. This, all this can be stacked up, yeah. So I have variation of this spiral, which are I think 1.5 meter long. I wrote it very widely in a broad edge pen because I, I realized that if I did something that big with a pointed pen, it would take me forever to fill the page. So I use a broad, broad edge. I took Dorothy, Dorothy, I need a really, really, really broad edge. And then she helped me make one out of like brush shims. So that's how I work. Um, I have, I think a lot of people like me, we have a lot of photos of our work, which is why Marina always told us, if you have photos of your work, compile them, print them out, so that when you look at them in sequence, you will learn more about your own process and yourself. So that's the reason why I started putting everything, I started printing everything. I feel like a tree killer every time I look at my process book, <laughs> which I am. But as much as possible, I re recycle the scraps that I've made from other projects. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, everything in the pocket sleeves. Pocket sleeves are amazing. Um, it's just that I, ha I have this habit of cutting the edges so that I can access the contents a lot easier. And, um, yeah, that's me. Um, everything's a real mess. If you happen to notice, there was a knock on the door just now. My aunt came in. She said, you have a delivery. She put it there. She looked at the state of the room. She shook her head and she walked out. So, <laughs> so, so that's the reality. My, my workspace is very messy. Uh, I'm getting my house next year. I'm hoping that you have a dedicated workspace. I'll make sure it has. But for now, um, I'll try to keep everything to the process folder. Yeah. So that's that. Um, that's really all I have to share, actually. That's great. Um, Wonderful sharing. Thank you so much, Judy. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. And <clears throat> that's it. And uh, yeah. I was sharing a few people that I was doing some new projects now after after symbiosis. I was playing with like uh, different coasters. I was playing with like different ways I could play with um my writing. So this is a Chinese thing. I could play with this. So I try to work with different materials after mm -hmm. after symbiosis. Um, I started teaching at an art school, local art school. So I think just having the symbiosis was a good enough artist break to develop myself. And then I could get over a little bit of a plateau because I was so I was so stuck in this writing calligraphy. Yeah. And thanks Natalie, you know, like keeping keeping track of the process. I would share, I can share this. Um, so for the notes that I take, uh, I have a lot of notes that I've taken from previous classes. Um, so for example, Spencerian classes, I have at least um, taken four or five classes with different teachers. Michael South's class, I've really taken a few. So like for example, I'll actually have the notes here in these folders and I'll keep the notes underneath. So 
this whole set of notes comes together. Okay, this is the notes from his class and including my terrible examples of what I did during class. So this is how I share, this is how I keep my workshop notes. But I also have one other way because I was losing pages using this method. Um, I, I realized that I would take one page to, to reference and then not put it back again in the same place. So what I tried to do was that for my own notes, I have a lot of folders. So these are the notes that I did for my class in the cell. And oh yes, I forgot to mention this. So when you set up your folder, right? Um, you must put it the other way around than the way it's usually made. Because okay, when you have a folder, the most typical way of following is like this. Okay, your folder, it opens up like that and you slot in the pages, right? Every time you add a page, it's on top of the first piece, which is not ideal when you're trying to build a chronological order. So in order to make sure that my latest, my latest page is the later part of the chronology, I actually flipped it over such that when I put in the first piece, it is at the bottom of the folder, okay? So when it's at the bottom of the folder, any page that you add to, that you open up this, this and you add to, will be behind the very first piece you add, okay? So this is uh, a very important step in this like, process journaling. I had to figure it out because when I do something like this, I keep all my notes together in this way. The pages don't go missing. And I have this set of plastic binders, which are very useful for just putting together any set of notes. Although it, it does cut a little bit in the text, but otherwise that's how I, I work. And then all this goes into color coordinated folders. This is as organized as I can be because the rest of my process is not organized. Okay, this is a disclaimer. If I even just, the normal state of my table is like this, layers of stuff, okay? A ring binder is great, or just, but a lot of ring binders, if they have metal in Singapore and in humid countries, it will not work because it will rust. I've had so many folders rust on me and it is quite painful. Um, so I always use plastic parts. If I have, let's say the pages, right? Um, let me show you the pages again. I have a folder and I have like, these are the holes that I'm going to punch things into. I actually use something called, what's this called? A reinforcement ring. A reinforcement ring is basically just this like little plastic thing that you see here. And you just place it down here because I will add a disclaimer, okay? This is a good thing to protect your pages from tearing so that they won't fall out of the folder, okay? And um, if anyone wants to shop, I have, you just go to all the stationery shops. I, I found this in popular in my local stationery store, but um, it's, it's not an excuse to shop, okay? I'm saying that you should try to reuse what you already have um, and not shop more. <laughs> Because this is what Marina always tells us, we should use the materials that we already have and not try to use more of the Earth's resources. But yes. Um, oh, yes. So what happened yesterday, right when I was preparing this, was that this folder gave way. Because I was so rough with it for over... I started this last year, right? So I was, I've been very rough with the pages. And because it's so thick, right? What happened was that the plastic broke. Because just yesterday, I was yanking it. I was trying to see which pages I want to reference. And the plastic actually broke. So I will have to transfer this into the new one that I'm showing you, this one. Because with time, because I was trying to figure things out, I kept pulling the pages apart and putting them back together again. So 
um, I know metal is more, more hard wearing, but I use plastic because I really don't want any rust marks on my pages. Yeah. So that's that. Um, that's one consequence of having too many pages because you can go up to a folder that has 1,000 sheets. But whether the folder, the binding system can take it is a different matter. Okay. So, uh, yes. Um, what other materials do you need to know? Um, blue tape, you can find it in art supply stores. It's quite simple. Archival tape, you can find it in craft stores if you have one near you. Um, papers. So, a lot of my experiments are on scrap papers. Um, ribbons on childhood, you can actually write on ribbons, except that it will probably feather. I've tried it before. Um, you can just use anything to decorate your books as well. All these are all on the scraps of paper that I have saved. And it's just building a system to save works. So let me show you, let me grab a few of my folders and maybe that can give you an idea of how I organize my papers, okay? So let me, give me a second. Okay, so like you can see, I have several folders here. Um, oh, the, the binding threads with metal ends, right? I actually use them quite a bit. I used them before, but the metal bits will rust. And in Singapore, whether anything that is metal will rust, even my watercolor paints will grow mold on them, even if I dry them out. So somehow things always happen in humid weather. So that's why I actually avoid the cloth things as well. Even though I love the majority of the cloth, the metal bits are rest. Yeah. And then, okay. So I have folders of all my scraps. I have one that says, I have, let me see if I can show you here. This one says dark papers, which literally is scraps of dark paper. So they are of different sizes. Um, there's gray in here, which, um, it's darker than cream, but in general, it should be more or less the same type of um, papers inside. Okay. For my colors, this is just literally colored papers. So when I do a project, I test things out. I have scraps. I just save them in here. So it's all different pages, all different types of papers. And these will all come in very handy when I'm scrap, when I'm collaging, scrapbooking, all the works. Um, I have a folder where this is called completed works. Okay. But it's, it's not really completed works. It's just a scrap menagerie of like all the works that I played with. Um, like, let's say the coaster. This was inspired by this work I did many years ago. Um, so because I keep them loose, I get to reference them quite a bit. And I'm inspired by old things that I've done quite easily. So things like that. Um, writings, old pieces. So sometimes um, it's, it can get overwhelming because I do so many pieces on different types of paper. Uh, my final pieces usually are gifts. So I don't have the final pieces. I only have the process. So it's a, it is a struggle for me to decide what to throw away and what to keep. And what I do is pieces that are, that are simpler, that are monotone, I can keep them and reuse them in some way. That's why I started doing the weaving of the pages. Okay. There are other things where, for example, I would, let me show you one more thing. And maybe that might help. I 
think because I, I'm an art student, I keep so many materials, right? Um, people like, I, I'm actually staying with my aunt right now. And I think she's always a bit wary of why does she keep so many things? These are Nespresso um, capsule containers, literally Nespresso. And they have all these very, very fascinating patterns. And what I did was I kept all of these, the patterns, so that I can play with them in scrapbooking. So I actually don't buy, I don't buy many stickers. I bought a lot last time, but then I actually stopped. I just reuse patterns that I have from leftover from packaging, from bags, from what I order. And I, some of these, I can actually make um, cards with them. So all you need to do is literally, you just punch a hole, write something nice, or you take a piece of paper, you write something nice on it, you overlay and paste it on, and you punch a hole and it becomes a tag, you know? It becomes a gift that you give to somebody. Um, it doesn't need to be very expensive to be heartfelt, I think. Um, I had a student come up to me two, three days ago and tell me, Judith, um, my, my writing's not perfect enough. Uh, I feel like I'm not, I'm not getting the shape that you are making on paper. And I just kept telling her, look, my mentor Marina always tells me that mistakes are the human hand. And that is something I've kept very close to my heart. And I always tell my students as well, we are the product of everyone we learn from and it's a journey. And with this book, it is my journey. And I can play in this journey. I can be my authentic self and just draw and have fun in this journey. And that's what I want to hold on to. I don't want to hold on to the perfect examples of all my writing because honestly, I don't hold on to them. I give them away. Yeah. So, so that's that. Um, thank you for attending my TED talk. Sorry that it has been so long. I just kept talking. <laughs> But yes, if you have any other questions, just let me know and I'll very happily take any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. That was great sharing. Sometimes it's you know, it's just um yeah, interesting to to see what other artists are doing to capture their ideas, their process. And uh, I have I have um <clears throat> I have um read or seen, you know, so many artists saying that the process of creating is very important. And, um, and, and, and that every artist develops their own process, you know. So I think that what you have created is a, is a system where you use to capture your, your creative process. And uh, it's, it's just very interesting to see. Mm, yeah. yeah. It, it took me many years to meander back to this way of thinking. Mm. But yeah. I would say this process, you know, this process folder, I would say, is actually really time consuming. Yeah, because in addition to doing all the work that you have, you're also consciously planning layouts for this process folder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're a bit more disciplined and you can do it as you go along, it's not so scary. If you're like me and you accumulate a few weeks worth of work and then you print out all the photos all at once and then you first stuff everything inside. <laughs> yeah, Natalie says she wants to do one to document this mentoring process and, and really that was why um, this is one of the things that we encourage all the mentees to do because we want to demonstrate the learning and the growth um, so we encourage the mentees to keep a journal an art journal or like what Judith, you know, her way of uh, keeping the process is through this um, scrapbooking folder um, other people like Bakit, you know, if you saw her presentation, she she's very, very neat. You know, she bound hers into books. Um, but really what, what is so important is to capture the journey. You know, where did you start and then where does it end? And along the way, when you, you look back, it, um, it kind of refreshes your memory about what you have learned. So uh, yeah, it's, it's just a very good thing. And, and, and I do think that, you know, if you are trying to create something this is where there is a process you know if you're just sitting there writing calligraphy then there is really no process so in the process of making the art that is when you start to you know have explorations and then you want to remind yourself what was it that you did what do you think about and 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 that is the interesting thing to capture yeah mm. 
And I think the mentorship process was it was good for me and Lasette because Lasette's an architect by training. She's completely different. She has she thinks in terms of words. So she has a book where it's it's literally just words and she processes her things that way. And then what comes out is a perfectly formed piece of work that can be this big, this big, this big. And every week when I share, I feel like a little kid bringing out my, my tools and crayons and just showing like, hey, I did this. And then the set will be, I have a perfect piece of work. <laughs> you know? So every week during the process, Marina will look at both of us and she's like, it's great that you have such different processes because we influence each other. Mm. Um, my system became to get a bit slightly more systemized because I was inspired by Lisette. Um, and I think she started to realize that playing wasn't scary because she could see that I was brain dumping everything onto paper. So every mm-hmm. week, Marina would just look at us. Okay, so what do you have for me, ladies? <laughs> and then we would just share, you know. And for me, all the pages were anchored by the meeting notes that I would take every session. So there was a natural way to organize. Yeah. So a bit like what, uh, was it? Was it Bernice? I think Bernice mentioned that she was taking notes as well, right? For their group. So Susan was saying that, hey, their, her notes are very useful. Meeting notes are very useful. Yeah. So yeah. that's that. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, um, we've come to the end of the hour. So I'm going to stop the recording. Yeah.